There it is. Hello and welcome. I'm always hunting for that record button. I love that moment when you just, you can watch someone, their eyes drift. Look, look, they're clicking around. Welcome to the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I am your clearly frazzled host, Kevin. And today I have with me Dr. Brooke Moran. Brooke is a professor and an executive coach, culture and leadership development workshop facilitator, and co-creator of Zenith Leadership Experience. She is the author of, and this is a big title with even bigger insights, Organizational Heartbeats, Engaging Employees in Sustainability by Leveraging Purpose and Curating Culture. I love that title so much, but we'll just get right into it. Brooke, thank you so much for being here. Are you kidding me? Thank you for having me. And sorry to give you such a mouthful to open things up. I just, I always worry that I'm going to trip over my words because each word there, my, my mind wants to settle in on it and talk about it. Right. So we'll hit, we'll hit the highlights here today. Okay, so. First, let's start at the start. What prompted you to begin to get into coaching, to start a coaching practice? You know, I, I would say it actually started kind of early without going through my whole bio, but I've always been someone who loves to help people. I'm the one who would stick up for the kids being bullied. Um, I'm always the one that helps people to try to reach their goals and celebrate their successes. And then when I got into leadership development, I learned more about coaching and how powerful it is. And so then pursued, you know, certification and dove in and, and it was just what I had hoped. Incredibly rewarding. And I feel really fortunate to be able to be on people's journeys. That's really what it's about. You don't necessarily like a lot of people think of a coach and they probably have a, like a sports analogy in their brain where they see like a whistle and somebody like in a, in a, in a windbreaker on a sideline or something like that. I, I imagine like, but more so different now, especially in the last couple of years as coaching has just elevated in the popular consciousness and people have begun to see the value like you have in having someone who is not just telling you what to do from some distant place, but they're by your side, you know, guiding you over the, you know, the bridges and making the connections that you need. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, since you brought up the whistle, you know, I, I think there can be a coach's role to be like, tweet, tweet, wait a second, what's going on there? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper on that. Or are you, are you being really honest with yourself right now? And also, while I've never seriously held pom-poms, like, yeah, I want to also be a cheerleader for people when they have those breakthrough moments, when they have those ahas or, you know, when they, when they step into their potentials in ways that they never realized, I absolutely want to be there as a cheerleader for them. I kind of love that in my head. I have, you don't need pom-poms to be a cheerleader and you don't need a whistle to be a coach, but even though you can do, you can serve both purposes, you know, you could visibly right, right. cheer somebody on and also give them the tweet tweet that they need sometimes to call them up short and make them aware of, you know, what might be happening. I just, I love, I love everything about the coaching experience. It's just been great. And in this podcast, I get to meet so many of people like you who just enrich and inspire. And like you were, like you were getting at already, it's such a rewarding endeavor coaching. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, I bet you learned so much on this podcast, um, but will you, I just spoke over you. So will you please? <laughs> it's, I get so excited sometimes. And as you could say, well, you could see, um, but as the audience might be able to hear, I'm moving my hands vigorously as I talk because I get excited and I'm very much a hand talker. Um, I'm, I'm talking over you, but I'm supposed to be interviewing you. So let me, let me get it back on to talking about you and what you're doing in your coaching practice, because I'm sure we'll, we'll be able to sink into other things here in a minute. But I love, I really love this question and I don't want to skip over it because there's a, there's a key word here that I find a lot of coaches like to take and pivot either into or away from. That word is unique. Obviously, there are a lot of coaches who are doing so many things that are, that you could characterize as unique. But then again, that word unique, like one of a kind. I mean, coaches are all doing relatively similar things and making connections in similar ways. But I feel like everybody has their, I don't want to call it a spin, but they have a certain yeah. way of going about things that does make them unique in the coaching world. And I'm wondering what that's like for you, what that is for you. Yeah, I think, you know, probably a, a couple of things. My business partner, Paul Tame, and I are actually life partners, also professors in the same program, co parent So you can imagine that we do pretty well if we haven't killed each other yet. <laughs> but we both have a background in outdoor leadership, outdoor education, adventure education. And so that really is creating a big, vigorous learning environment for folks to hone their leadership skills, to discover more about themselves, to hone their interpersonal skills. And so we try to bring nature into our programming, whether that's, you know, doing coaching on a walk or bringing in, you know, or having folks just have a quick mindfulness check-in, but looking at a plant. 
So that's, we try to bring in those principles, also stepping out of comfort zones. That's a, a huge thing in outdoor education. We very much bring that in and front load that into coaching that we wanna work with folks who are ready to step out of their comfort zone and really dig into that hard work. The other thing is we tend to pair our coaching with a leadership course. You mentioned Zenith leadership experience. Yeah. So we have a, a multi-month virtual option and we also have an immersion course but we do a leadership 360 we use the leadership circle profile and then we do coaching for you know results from that but also throughout the program where we're talking about how do you mentor how do you create a really inclusive about jedi you know <laughs> justice equity diversity and inclusion and so it's part of a bigger holistic package for folks where we can meet them where they are in their leadership journey that's perfect that a uh, sort of codified structure with the adaptability built in to be flexible and to adjust to people's needs the individual needs that's i find that to be that's at the heart of every successful coaching program and coaching approach is that ability to be structured and adaptable at the same time very much so. And then in the course, students start to cheer for each other and challenge each other and, and um, really support one another. So it's, a, it's just, it's a blast. Again, we, you know, we pinch ourselves after every session, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we are able to do this with these phenomenal people who are just ready to, ready to go for it. And we get to be there, be part of it. So yeah, the energy is all there and you find you find at the beginning where it feels like or it seems like it's going to be something that you're going to do when it just really quickly becomes something that you facilitate and participate in and then just get to almost bask in like you're sunbathing because everyone's light begins to shine and like you were saying begins to shine on each other and before you know it the momentum just carries itself and you just get to watch and smile <laughs> still very much things, so but yeah it's it's wonderful <laughs> very much so i realize i'm making these massive nodding gestures like to my to my chest and way up to the sky really agreeing with everything you're saying and your listeners can't see that <laughs> <laughs> i think it comes through in our tone in the tone of our voice we're clearly very excited about about this entire coaching experience at least i hope it comes through <laughs> yeah. let's see I, one question that i always find pretty interesting i'm going to skip a couple of the ones we have we have a battery of questions just for the listeners and you'll all like regular listeners will know I never get to all of them. Um, but I love talking about challenges. And I like to kind of position it both past and present, because sometimes there are challenges that have been overcome that really provide a great deal of insight and inspiration. And sometimes there are challenges that are present that are almost inspiring or driving us to thrive through them and to them. And so I'm wondering, what would you say your biggest challenge either has been in the past or is currently? Oh boy. Big one. It's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. Something actually my business partner challenges me on is, is I am a lifelong learner. I mm. just love constantly being challenged. And so I think a challenge for me with coaching is, okay, when is enough enough? Like, oh, I'm going to do this positive intelligence course. Oh, okay. I'm going to work with my coach. Oh, I really want to look into this. You know, he's like, okay, enough, enough. You have enough now. Let's let's just go into coaching. So I don't know that that it, maybe it's more of a challenge for him than it is for me. If I had unlimited funds and unlimited time, I would constantly be jumping in and learning more. Gosh, what what else? I do feel like that's a common one amongst a lot of coaches because so many coaches are 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 self self educators, no matter whether they've you know you know gone to like the highest echelons of of academia or not pretty much everyone I talk to, they are voracious learners. They yeah. love to learn, not because they want to consume, but because they know that they can turn that into energy that they can then give back to somebody else, to, to, yeah. to the people that they coach. Yeah. And so very there's this so. virtuous cycle. And it's, it's very like, it's one of the best kinds of self-perpetuating positive cycles, right. but it can be a challenge to sometimes say to yourself or have a, a very good partner say to you, right pump the brakes on the, on, right, on, the right. on the voracious learning. And let's just let's right. take a break from that. Let's, let's redirect some of those energies right. elsewhere, just for a little exactly. while. <laughs> yeah. but I, you know, I would say with, with clients, a tricky one is because people don't know about coaching or they think, right, the whistle and the pom-poms and the, you know, the actual coaching <laughs> on a field with balls or whatever it may be, <laughs> or they liken it to therapy. And so a challenge that I often have is helping people understand 
you know, particularly folks who are adverse to therapy or aren't used to it, that that's a scary thing for them, that coaching is very different. And so I'm sure you've heard this, this analogy before, but what I have found resonates with potential clients is, hey, therapy is kind of like archaeology. It's digging in the past, right? Whereas coaching is architecture. It is designing your future and moving toward it. And I think that helps folks understand what that process is. And of course, we talk about, you know, co-creating the environment and, and, and the path forward. But I think that helps disarm a bit the scariness of, of what they have perceived coaching might be. That is fantastic. I had not come across that dichotomy before, that yeah. archaeology and, and architecture. That is a very lovely way to describe what that is, because yeah. you're right. So many people come in with so much fear about therapy or therapizing or anything that might be yeah. ascribed to that uh -huh. because there is an unearthing. There is a sort of digging in and people, you know, they have that fear of the shovel, that fear of the pickaxe, you know, whereas coaching, you could still do a lot of the same kinds of deep work, but starting in the present and moving forward. And in a lot of ways, I mean, this granted, this necessarily comes down the road a ways, but that can open up the door to future therapy. If that's something that you feel like you need or want, because you have greater access to your present awareness. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the co-creation, like what do you want your future to be? It, it allows them to become really excited. Yeah. Free, to, yeah. free to feel excited. It could be tough yeah. sometimes. We feel like it's almost something we can't have until we've dealt with our whatever we need. To, we, are, we think or try not to think that we need to deal with. Um, that's a very, very, very good right. point. The freedom to be excited. Yeah. God, I like that. Sorry, now, now I, just want to, I just want to sit with that. I'll sit with that later this afternoon. Maybe I'll do some no, journaling. This is great. I, I love geeking out on conversations because I always learn stuff too. So thank you, Kevin. I appreciate, I appreciate this. Well, let me give you a chance to talk a little bit about, a little bit more about your coaching practice in specific. What's, obviously it's been a roller coaster is an understatement of, you know, a year and a half that we've gone through so far. A lot of coaches and coaching practices have thrived because people are really recognizing the need and the value of it. So something I like, I like to put it this way, what's now and what's next for your coaching practice? Like, what do you have kind of like in the works for the next, you know, like six months, 12 months, anything coming up, a new course, something launching, maybe a book, another book, who knows? Funny you should say that. I'm working on writing to a publisher right now, a, a, a purpose-driven employee engagement workbook. So kind of a companion to the book I have, but really so folks can just, they don't need to read about case studies. They can just jump down and start to answer questions hmm. and reflect on what's going on in their organization and begin to build a strategy around that. So very, very sort of hands-on, minds-on. Yeah. I'm fully working on that, but we are also, we've partnered with someone in the outdoor industry. Since our background is outdoor industry, we're looking to really hone our coaching clientele from that industry being that is a, oh gosh, $887 billion energy industry, bigger than oil and gas, who knew? Oh, wow. and, and so we, we have a background in that industry. So we really want to work with that clientele. So we've partnered with someone, this is a new venture. We'll see if it works, but a phenomenal woman who worked in the outdoor industry association. So she has great networks and she's going to help us do recruiting and introductions in the part of the industry that we weren't involved in years ago and aren't now. So we'll see how that works. You know, we're trying to bring on contractors to yeah. build. As you said, I'm a professor. A business partner, life partner is also a professor. So this is our fun side gig that <laughs> we intend to build and build and build until it's our main gig. So we'll see how it goes. And also, I mean, I, I don't want to throw this word around lightly, but it's pretty brave of you to leave the the safety and security of of of. I, I, are you tenured? Yes, I have been since two thousand seven. So yeah, it's a it's <sighs> right, and and that's why I have a coach right now too. It is willing <laughs> because I want to step into the work where I really feel like I can make a huge change, positive change, the work I love, and terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely. There's so I'm working with a coach to to figure out that path forward. They're always so close together, that, that genuine excitement and terror. They're, they're almost the same emotion, depending on the time of day, depending on what you ate for dinner. <laughs> you know, it's really good for empathy. It's my coaching clients that are, want to make that big move. It's like, it's that first step. And I'm literally like stepping on my little treadmill desk here. <laughs> that first step out of the comfort zone is a really scary one. And so I've had that empathy in the past, but oh my gosh, is that empathy really palpable right now? 
it's a it's, it's a nice I, I, I like the way that the, the coach's mindset works naturally you're naturally con- you're you're connecting with your clients even though we're just talking about it right now you're like <laughs> always that the, the way the mind works it's kind of it's like we were talking about earlier it's, it almost has its own momentum you know once you once you do take that step the next step comes right after and it's just it's it's scary as all get out and it's yeah. exciting as just about anything else you could ever try to do and if you're lucky it's that way for the rest of your life which is just i don't know I get, I get a little bit corny about this kind of thing. And I start to wax and get a little, you know, I start to throw words like magical out there, just willy nilly, you know? <laughs> you know, I was just going to call us coaching nerds. So, and that's a, that is a huge compliment in my world. So, so yeah, we're on the same page, I think. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Where is the best place for people to find you online? Where do you want to get people to go? Yeah, www. <laughs> then for, and it's the word F-O-R, business.net. And you'll see coaching options and workshop options, and also actually a lot of free publications around purpose and employee engagement, things like that. So yeah, please, please take advantage. Fantastic. I, I'm pretty certain we could do this all day. We could, we could nerd out for hours, but I should let you go and I should let the audience go. (laughs) So uh, thank you for being on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Love it. And I love it. Thank you so much for this opportunity today. What a, what a great way to round out my day, Kevin. It's too much fun. It's just too much fun. Ought to be illegal. I'm glad it's not. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you all Take for care. listening and we'll talk to you soon.